Hi, this is your host Supreme Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TF Hardless Talk. And today we have with us once again Mohan Atreya, SVP of Product and Solutions at Rafa Systems. Mohan, it's great to have you on the show. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. We have, of course, uh, covered you folks earlier in the past, but it has been a long time. So I would just refresh the memory of our viewers. Quickly remind us what is Rafa System all about? We are in um, uh, a category called uh, Kubernetes Operations. Um, so we are a SaaS platform that helps organizations get control uh, over their Kubernetes fleet and, and get everything organized and, and managed organizationally. Perfect. And today we are going to talk specifically about uh, a new open source project called Perilous. Uh, so first of all, give us a quick overview. What is this project all about? Why you created? Because if you do look at zero trust, you know, access, which is going to be the focus of this project, I mean, this is kind of seems like a solved problem. So what unique challenges that you still saw there that you felt, hey, we need to come up with a project? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this this was actually uh, created as, uh, it was a contribution the company decided to make to the community based on um, uh, a service that we offer in our platform. Um, so about two and a half years ago, Literally just before COVID started, um, we had uh, you know a, a lot of people in the company come from the access background, including me. And and, uh, and I used to work at a company called Okta before in the access management space. And and um, the rest of the company, the engineers and leadership also worked in a related space as well. So we just knew the space very well. So the problem we heard from customers at that time is, you know, developers are at home. Uh, they want to access their Kubernetes clusters that are running behind a firewall, and they really hated using VPNs and bastions and all of that. And then when there was a fleet of clusters, 10, 20 clusters, the security team would come and say, hey, I have no idea who is doing what on these clusters, right? Uh, and, and then who did what on these clusters? And uh, it's in some ways, you know, if you think about Kubernetes, it, Kubernetes is essentially your new data center, Right. Uh, so if you don't have this question answered and you can't have the right balance between the user experience or developer experience and the right controls in place, I mean, you're in a terrible state at the time, right? You have an impractical uh, deployment at the time. So when we launched this service, we, we solved the problem using our, um, you know, the enterprise zero trust access solution. And it, you know, then came, it came in, uh, kind of forced everyone to work from home. And it became the fastest growing and the most heavily utilized service in our um, uh, enterprise platform. And, and uh, what organizations came and told us was, this is fantastic, uh, but you know, I may not always be able to become a customer of Rafe. Why can't you know, it would be great if you guys can contemplate you know, in helping others as well? And you know, uh, uh, the Rafi platform is built on a bunch of open source technologies. We leverage open source, and it's an opportunity to give back, right? You know, we are now uh, 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 you know a Series B funded company. We are pretty far along. We have large enterprise customers. We felt it was the right time to take that thing we built and finessed and tuned and uh, package it and give it to the rest of the world to use if they have this problem. So that was the genesis behind it um, uh, for the. Parallels project, and we named it appropriately, right? Like if you look at Parallels, it's a, it's a, you know, it's named after uh, a Greek ship, um, um, and uh, you look at the history there. I mean, it'll be pretty interesting. It, it, uh, uh, if you do a Wikipedia search, you'll see some interesting tenets there and characteristics. And we believe in that uh, vision as a company, and we hope this solution, open source solution, will help customers achieve those goals. Uh, so the name was very deliberate, yeah. With most open source projects, uh, there are a couple of you know approaches. One is that com project can be company owned or managed project can move to a neutral foundations. So what is your plan for the project uh, long-term plan? It's too early, but it's still. So uh, we, we, uh, we've been working with CNCF and we wanna contribute this to CNCF. Usually when you're 100% right, I mean, just because something is open source means nothing, right? Um, it has to be governance for open source projects is really important. Um, so uh, the ideal approach for this is to contribute it to CNCF, uh, which uh, you know a lot of projects tend to go there. 
And uh, but CNCF you know, requires us to check a bunch of boxes before you know they take it through the process, right? Um, so we're working on that process right now. But the intention is to contribute to CNCF and then uh, even bring in other people who can contribute because the advantage of open source is it doesn't have to be just us contributing. It can be the whole world and other companies contributing, right? So this is a problem that everybody has. Uh, so we think as awareness increases, as adoption increases, there'll be contributions and new use cases that maybe we haven't even thought about that'll come in. And that had to be governed and, and managed and CNCF would be the right place to do that. Um, so that's kind of what we are uh, pushing for right now. When we look at a lot of open source projects, open source solves day one problem. Uh, day two is the real challenge. And that's where commercial support uh, behind open source projects come to pl at play, where either you offer additional features or support that not everybody wants, so the community will not be interested in it, but few customers will be interested in it. You want a long term support, you want update and up maintenance. So, do you also have any commercial plan around Parallels also? Yeah. So many open, this is actually a very good question. So um, given the history and the journey I explained, right? Like when we attempted to solve this problem in our platform and then realized the world needs it and we decided to create a derivative open source out of it, we kind of have had a reverse journey compared to many of the other open source projects that exist, right? Because a lot of others start with open source and then they take one or two options. They basically say, here's a support license, pay me money. Right, or they may take a position that hey, uh, open source has fewer features than an enterprise version. We decided we don't want to do any of that because you know all of those feel like it's a bait and switch for us, right? So we kept this distinctly separate. An organization that decides to use Parallels, right? Um, they get the the pure upstream um, version of of the software, and uh, there is no uh, there is no reason for them to move to uh, uh, you know, a RAFI supported version or someone else, right? In, in fact, someone else could potentially take this thing and build a service uh, themselves on top of it. That option also exists. Now, we provide, the, it's a small part of our platform, so uh, the zero trust access is one out of the uh, several services we offer in the platform. Uh, the reason why people use our enterprise version is the simplicity the ease of use, and uh, then I say simplicity is the operational simplicity. There's nothing to install, nothing to manage. We scale it. Um, so when people come to that, they, they come for those reasons, right? And then, of course, support. Um, they can come and scream at us if, if there's a problem or we can help them quickly. Uh, but there'll be a swath of customers who will not want that. They will say, I want to run this myself. And, and Parallels is well designed for them. And uh, that is not going to be a bait and switch. Uh, kind of a licensing model. E everything that is available in our enterprise version, uh, the equivalent thing will be contributed back to Parallels. We're trying to keep this pure, right? Um, and follow the CNCF model um, where uh, there is not a bait and switch kind of a approach. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, customers do have an option to come into RAFA for the enterprise version if they want to. What have you seen in these two years when it comes to security? We've seen two, uh, two approaches that people land up taking. Uh, and this is predominantly driven by the, the typical personas in mix. Um, if, you, if you think about a typical ops and SRE person, uh, they are predominantly focused on availability, uptime, automation, you know, being able to reproduce stuff, right? And, and security kind of becomes like a number two item. It's not job number one for them. Although it's top of mind, it's not number one on the list, right? Because everything else trumps it. Um, and then there's a security team typically that is looking at a very wide spectrum. Kubernetes is one of the many silos they have to worry about, right? Um, it's typically a newer uh, thing for them, right? So what we find in the market is when these two teams kind of land up um, intercepting, that's when this concern and problem lands up surfacing, right? Now there's a third angle here. As adoption of, of Kubernetes lands up uh, increasing in an organization, there's more and more users, internal users, whether they're developers and other people who need access to stuff, right? And they expect a great user experience, right? Like they don't want to slow down, right? They expect to move really fast. So when 
the culmination of these three things come together, that's when the organization lands up realizing that, hey, I need to, you know, security becomes like, uh, it needs to be part of my package, not, not like an afterthought. And it actually, if done well, can actually result in a transformative experience for the developer. This is kind of what results you know, when people say zero trust, you know, uh, why is that energy behind it? Why is there momentum behind it? Because it's an opportunity not just to be secure, but also uh, do it in a transformative way, simple way, low cost way, low burden way. So now having said that, the the we do meet some organizations that sometimes are, uh, in my opinion, correctly breaking up the problem into what I would call as solving the table stakes, basic problems for security first, and then dealing with the more complex use cases later. Because for security is a journey, right? You don't have to solve this one problem. There's a big list of 20, 30 things you got to solve. And sometimes taking care of the basics is really important. And uh, uh, we believe access is is a foundational aspect because you can't live without it. I mean, you have a cluster and if you can access it, it's game over, right? And if you don't know who is accessing your cluster and you have it wide open on the internet, it's game over again. It's such a foundational piece that organizations need that um, we believe it's, it's seminal to, to security, right? Um, sure, you can do container scanning and all of that. Those are also important, but do you need to do that day one is the million dollar question. Excellent. Uh, once again, thanks for explaining it in detail. Uh, I think, I mean, to be honest with you, this is a topic where we can sit for hours and have a discussion. But I think uh, from the perspective of this announcement, we do have everything that we need. We talk about the project, we talk about the future, we talk about whether it's going to a foundation, we talk about the commercial angle as well. Uh, is there anything else that you feel, and of course, Olivia, you're also there that, hey, so we should have talked about that also. You think that we have everything uh, covered. From an organizational perspective, you know, many organizations are just, just starting out, right, uh, with Kubernetes. Some of them are very mature. Not everyone is there yet, right? So typically what we find is that there is an inflection point um, when it becomes apparent that they had to solve this access problem for Kubernetes. And it usually happens when one of the two are true or both are true. When they have many users, like think of developers that need access, you know, hundreds of people uh, who are constantly moving across business units, moving roles, changing roles, then it becomes a nightmare for people, right? Because you know, how do you how do you configure this? How do you how do you make this all work? It all has to tie in with a source of truth, typically some place where you ma manage your identity, right? Like an HR system, an Active Directory, or Okta, or something like that. The second compelling event is when they have a fleet of clusters. When they have many clusters, uh, you know, five clusters, six clusters, hundred clusters, um, uh, and these are running in separate security domains. Like think one in a data center in the U.S., one in the data center in Europe, one in Asia Pac, etc. Right? Now you have a different level of pain. At that point, something like a parallelist becomes like super obvious for people. If people have only one cluster and two users. Uh, they may not really feel the pain. As in parallel, think of it like an Advil or a paracetamol uh, when you feel the pain. That pain happens when you have those two many users, many clusters. That's when you feel the pain and you need uh, the Advil uh, of parallel. Mohan, thank you so much for taking time out today and not only talk about this project, but also share you know the pain point that folks feel uh, with clusters and how uh, this project is going to help them solve the problem. Thanks for sharing those insights. And as I said earlier, we should have these discussions more frequently, not at such huge gas. So I will look forward, I look forward to having our next discussion soon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Swapnil. Good to talk to you again and uh, looking forward to chatting again.